Nestled in the picturesque Berkshire Mountains of Western Massachusetts, Mount Greylock stands as the tallest peak in the state, soaring to an impressive 3,491 feet or 1,064 meters above sea level. This challenging and exhilarating time trial event takes participants on a thrilling journey to conquer this natural giant. This would be our second time ascending the mountain. Our first came earlier in June as part of the Mount Greylock Century event. That time we dragged ourselves up the mountain on tired legs that were pre-fatigued from over 50 miles of hilly riding before we reached Greylock. We're now five and a half hours into this ride, so I guess, I guess it makes sense that I'm, I feel like I'm done. This time we would be focusing only on Greylock itself and trying to climb it as fast as we can. So I put the Greylock time trial race on my calendar and have been looking forward to it all year. When I first mentioned it to Joy, she was hesitant, but after months of hearing me talk about it and then having her friend sign up for it, as well as some encouragement from our coach, Joy eventually decided to give it a try. I never expected myself to do this race because I had no intention of doing such a long, hard effort, but um, I was sort of convinced by a few people, and so that's why we're here. And Today, we are only doing the Mount Greylock climb, and we're racing it to try to see how fast we can go up that mountain. And um, yeah, I'm pretty excited, a little bit nervous. Um, this'll be a really long, tough effort um, if, if I'm, maxing out my ability it's going to be basically a threshold effort for roughly an hour so uh, something i've never done before and um, we're going to find out whether whether or not i can do that um, so yeah a little nervous but still looking forward to it we've been putting in some solid training in the weeks leading up to the race we focused our training on long threshold intervals and endurance miles we had some good training sessions that built our confidence and with a taper during the week of the race, our legs were fresh and our fitness was in a good place. We stayed at an Airbnb in North Adams, only a few miles away from the starting line. So we had plenty of time to get ourselves ready in the morning and we got in a solid warm up before we rode over to the event. This is going to be our, our warm-up spot. Before we head over to the other side, you guys can't see it, but on the right side is Greylock. Pretty overcast today uh, because of the rain yesterday, and it's pretty much going to be like this for the most part, which is to my benefit because I'm not, a, I'm not very good in the heat. And so this is actually a perfect, perfect conditions for me. A little nervous about the descent though, because we have to descend the mountain and we're sort of debating on whether or not we're going to descend this the north side or the south side which is car up a little uh it's not as steep as the north side but we do have a ride back to the north side which is where we have our airbnb so that's for a later problem that we can uh, discuss. During the warm up, I got a puncture in my rear tire without even knowing it. We're running tubeless tires, and the puncture must have been small and sealed quickly while I was riding because I never heard a hissing sound and I didn't feel the tire deflating. 
I only noticed the puncture because we went back to the house after the warm up to use the bathroom before heading over to the event. And when I was resting my bike down, I saw a sealant on the back of my frame. Yeah, you could see the sealant. There's sealant on my bike. On the back there. And the. Looks like a good amount of dingers. Put sealant in there. With a cool morning breeze in the air and our bikes finely tuned, we are ready to embark on a journey that will push us to our limits. We lined up based on our start times, which was easily determined using our number. I was nervous, but at the same time at ease and willing to accept the performance I gave that day, good or bad. As I waited for my turn behind the start line, the nerves started to set in again. I knew this would be one of the hardest efforts I've done. It was likely going to be an hour-long threshold effort, but I took some deep breaths and told myself, this is your time. This is what you've trained for, and it's an opportunity to show yourself what you can do. For the next hour, this is the only thing you need to be concerned with. It's just you, the bike, and the mountain. The first section of the climb is a residential area that starts out with a half mile stretch of mostly steep pitches that are over 10% grade, followed by one and a half miles of flat and rolling terrain that includes a very short downhill. The road is pretty bumpy in this section, and the possibility of another tire puncture did enter my mind, but fortunately that didn't happen. My strategy for the race was to ride around threshold and keep my power steady most of the way. I roughly estimated that it would take me around an hour, give or take a few minutes, if I sustained threshold power the whole way. I knew this would be difficult because I've never actually ridden at that intensity for a whole hour before. But based on how my recent workouts had gone, I felt like the task was possible if I could just maintain my focus. Joy? Yep. Hi. The temperature was mild but humid. In the days prior, we had a heat wave that went on for five days, so it was nice to have a break from it. The start was mostly cloudy with fog settling close to the base of the climb, which provided an eerie scene.
left. Thank you. The Mount Greylock Hill Climb time trial is not for the faint of heart. The course is a winding and challenging nine mile, 13.2 kilometers ascent, which features an awe-inspiring backdrop of lush forest and breathtaking vistas. The first half mile of the climb is steep with an average grade of 10.2%. Then it eases up with some downhill sections until you reach the two mile marker where the grade pitches up again. On the first half mile, I was extra careful about not letting my power get above threshold on the steep pitches because I likely would have paid for it later. I just settled into a low cadence rhythm and watched my power meter while other guys were flying past me. I wasn't concerned about getting dropped because these guys were likely stronger than me and there's nothing I can do about that in the moment. Realistically, I was racing against myself and I knew that when I signed up for it. After successfully holding myself back on the first half mile, I continued to pace myself conservatively on the flattish section and allowed my power to go down to tempo on the short downhill. I wanted to make sure I had my best power on the middle section of the climb. About two miles into the course, we took a left turn onto Notch Road, which takes you up most of the mountain. Notch Road was in pretty good condition, so I didn't need to worry about punctures anymore. This is what I would call the middle section of the climb, and it's what I thought would make or break my performance. It's about four miles long with a few switchbacks, and the grades are moderately steep, ranging mostly from the high single digits to the low double digits, with a few short stretches of mid single digits. I had the Strava live segment screen up on my Wahoo element, which showed the elevation profile, distance remaining, and estimated completion time, but I didn't look at those metrics yet. At this point, I was still focused on my power, trying to keep it close to 250 watts, 
and making sure it didn't go below 240 or above 260. I stayed mostly in my lowest gear, which is a 33-36 chainring cassette combo, and adjusted my cadence according to the terrain. Whenever the grade eased up, I would spin, and whenever it steepened, I would embrace the grind. This method worked well for me because it shared the workload between my heart and my legs. The higher cadence would help clear some of the lactate buildup, and the lower cadence would slow down my heart rate. I actually did not look at my heart rate at all during the climb, but I could feel that it was staying under control. The plan is to hold 190 to 195 watts, and if it feels hard after the first 20 minutes, back off. My coach has been really good drilling the importance of perceived effort on race day and even advises not to look at power because how I feel that day may not actually match the power I'm putting out. But for someone who's new to time trialing up a mountain, I opted for having the power metric up on my Wahoo screen so I can check if I'm going too hard. My legs also felt good, and I was a bit surprised that my power output was not fading at all. At one point, I checked my time, and I was about 30 minutes into the climb, and the legs were still moving just as well as they were toward the beginning. I considered turning up the power a little, but I decided to hold back. I was in uncharted territory, having never done a threshold effort of this length before. So I told myself, no, first you have to prove to yourself that you can hold this power for 40 to 50 minutes before trying to go harder. After some labored breathing, I realized I probably should not hold that power for too long as it didn't feel sustainable. So I eased up a little to prevent myself from blowing up.
I got through the middle section of the climb still feeling relatively strong. The next two and a half miles of the climb is moderate, with grades mostly in the mid to low single digits with a few short bumps. I switched to the big ring for this section and got off the saddle on the bumps. There were a few flat stretches and dips, and I found myself having to change gears more frequently than the middle section of the climb in order to stay on top of the pedals and keep my power where I wanted it. And this is when I started to feel the lactate build up. Little by little, I started catching people and did not let my excitement of riding up to them get in the way. I maintained my steady pace up the steep sections and continued with that pace when the grade eased up. I noticed that people tend to go relatively hard on the steep sections and sit up when the grade becomes gradual, so I used that knowledge to gain an advantage on them. You got this. Yep. One way or another. Yeah. Three more miles. Yep. Yeah. It became harder to produce the power, but I was still able to hit my target. While my legs were starting to fatigue and my perceived exertion was rising, the fact that I was now going at a faster speed helped encourage me mentally. I knew that these two and a half miles would go by faster. Another motivation was a few spectators at the side of the road playing music and cheering us on. Good job. Good job. 
respect. When I got closer to the top, the sun's rays peeked through the clouds and spilled onto the road. This was not a good sign for me because I tend to overheat easily and prefer cloud cover. I tried not to let this get in the way of my concentration and mental state and continued to pedal along. <sighs> With about one mile left and my legs feeling tired but still working, I decided it was time to push the pace as much as I could. I tried to ride at zone 5 and I was able to hit the lower end of that range. With less than one mile to the top, we make a left turn from Notch Road onto Summit Road. There is a stop sign there, but thanks to police and volunteers who were directing traffic, we didn't need to slow down much while making the turn. Summit Road gets a little steeper again with grades in the high single digits. There were signs that said 800 meters to go, 400 meters to go, etc. And it seemed like that last 800 meters took forever. I managed to stay slightly above threshold for most of the way until the finish line. Then I saw the 800 meter mark and I knew I was getting close. I tried so hard to give it all I got, but my breathing became heavy and even more labored. All the different parts of my body aching, my back, my groin, my arms. I climbed out of the saddle for a little bit to stretch out and sat back down to spin my legs and that seemed to help a little.
Good job. Vehicle. There you go, guys. Good job. Ah. As I crossed the finish line, my legs felt pretty much cooked, but my heart rate was still relatively under control. I'll attribute that to my even pacing, which kept my heart rate steady at an elevated but manageable level. I was relieved to finish the race. I had a lot of anticipation in the weeks leading up to it and had been starting to put pressure on myself. I wanted to finish the climb in under an hour, but I wasn't totally sure if I could manage that. Well guys, just finished the Great Lock time trial. My uh, time was a little over an hour, I think like 101.30ish. I actually forgot to turn my Wahoo off right at the finish line, so the time on my Wahoo is a little longer than what my official time was. Uh, also, the average power number that it's showing is probably a little bit lower because I stopped pedaling at the end. But anyway, I guess I'm I'm pretty happy with that. I was shooting for uh, around 250 average, and um, I was trying to finish in less than an hour, which I didn't do. So um, on the surface, that's a little it's. It's not ideal, but I, I'm not. I'm still not disappointed. It was a good effort. Um, I paced myself pretty well, pro possibly paced myself too conservatively, but because I was able to turn up the power by like 20 or 30 watts at the end, so that in the last mile or so, so that tells me I probably went slightly too easy earlier on, but um, it's a learning experience first time that I've ever tried to hold threshold for an hour and uh, um, I guess I did that I mean I don't know exactly what my FTP is but I'm probably close close to it I slowly approached the 400 then 200 then 100 meter signs which felt like forever I finally saw the finish line I climbed out of the saddle and gave it all I got Thirty-six. Oh. 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 As I approached the finish line of the Bascom Lodge, emotions ran high. A huge sense of accomplishment washed over me, exhausted yet triumphant. I finished in one hour, 10 minutes and 46 seconds with an average power of 175 watts and held threshold heart rate all the way to the top. Here she is. Sandy, oh, you're gonna record me puking. Oh. So Jason's been roaring by me and um, just by me. That's very impressive. Nice job. Yeah. Nice job. You guys too. Great job. Oh my god. Yeah, I only like four guys passed me and yeah. um, Jason was the only one who came leaping by. So yeah. Very impressive. That's awesome. You did guys think you're great. <laughs> I ended up finishing with an official time of one hour, one minute and 37 seconds, 
which was only good enough for 86th place out of 134 overall. I was never too concerned with my placement because my main goal was to test myself and see what I'm capable of. While I was hoping for a time under an hour, that would have been my perfect day. The conditions were very good, with warm but not hot temperatures and low wind, so I simply would have had to put out more power in order to finish in less than an hour. In hindsight, I think I could have pushed the pace slightly harder throughout the climb or started going above threshold a little sooner than I did, but it would have been walking a fine line for someone who's never done an effort like this. Based on how I felt at the finish, having a little bit left in the tank, I might have been able to push 5 watts higher on my average power, but while I was in the middle of the effort, I didn't know if I could do that. Overall, I'm very happy with my performance. I executed my pacing strategy and my fueling was on point. My legs felt good and didn't start the struggle until the very end. I learned that I'm capable of riding around threshold for an hour and now I feel confident that I can do it again as long as I'm properly trained and fueled. And I have a good benchmark time to beat for next year. If I can just boost my fitness by a little bit over the next year, I should be able to climb Mount Greylock in under an hour. I feel more motivated than ever to train and get stronger. I have some clear goals for next year and I'm ready to put in the work necessary to succeed. Did you hold your power? My realistic goal was one hour and 10 minutes to an hour and 15. So I was pleased with that result. I definitely think this will only make me stronger for next year. This is why I love this sport, that anyone at any age can persevere and climb up a literal mountain. As we rode down, I thought, it's not just about winning, it's about challenging oneself, reaching new heights and savoring the sense of achievement. So whether you're an experienced cyclist looking to test yourself or simply someone seeking an extraordinary adventure, the Mount Greylock Hill Climb Time Trial in North Adams, Massachusetts offers an unforgettable experience that combines the thrill of competition with the serenity of nature's grandeur. Until then, keep chasing your dreams and conquering your own summits. Oh, and don't forget to enjoy your rides. Well, I don't know what time. We want to thank Charlie, Donna, Chris, Tim, and the Northampton Cycling Club for organizing the Mount Greylock time trial. And we also want to thank all of the volunteers for their support. And we want to thank the spectators for cheering us on. This was a well-organized and supported event that attracted riders of many different ages from across the Northeast US. The ages ranged from nine years old to 83 years old, and multiple states were represented. Congratulations to everyone who participated in the Mount Greylock time trial. And a special shout out to our friend Sandy. It was fun sharing this experience with you. We hope you all enjoyed the challenge. Not many people can say they rode their bikes up Mount Greylock, so you all should be proud of your accomplishment. This was a fun event and we're planning to do it again in 2024. We hope to see you out there. Great job, let's go!